Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion. Today, we're doing something different. This is actually a request by you guys. I asked what you would wanna see on my channel and one of y'all suggested a closet tour and I was like, I know you guys don't actually wanna see that. And then I asked on my Instagram, would you wanna see this kind of video or a closet tour? And I did a little poll and like overwhelmingly, you guys chose a closet tour. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna be up front with you guys. Like, I live in a studio apartment, so A, this is not gonna be very glamorous. B, I'm not an aesthetic person. Most of these hangers have like three or four garments on them. My drawers are stuffed with things like, sorry, but I still hope you guys will like this video. I will talk about the clothes a little bit, but just as an overall rule of thumb, um, I typically only buy secondhand, so almost everything that you guys are gonna see was found secondhand. So just keep that in mind. And without further ado, let's get into it. So we're actually starting in my kitchen. This wicker shelf thing uh, I thrifted with my mom. And these three boxes that you guys see here, I keep some clothing in. Um, these boxes are from Ikea. Same with these guys right here. They're also from Ikea. At the top, it's where I keep my sweatshirts and my one pair of sweatpants. Um, I'm not really a loungewear person because I feel that loungewear encourages lounging activities and I'm already very prone to lounging activities. So I don't need any more encouragement to be lazy. So <laughs> don't have a ton, but at the top we have one of my favorite sweatshirts, which is custom that my friend made me. It says nothing safe is worth the drive from Taylor Swift's Red album. I have a couple other pairs of sweatshirts in there. Again, I'm just not a sweatshirt and hoodie person, but you gotta have something. And then in the middle box right here, we have t-shirts. I was a camp counselor and then I was also in a sorority. And if you have participated in either of those type of things, you know that you just collect so many t-shirts. Between college and sororities and summer camp and everything, you just end up getting a lot of t-shirts. So I have a lot. Um, and eventually I would love to make a t-shirt quilt or something for the jobs that I do. I work retail, I have to wear a uniform. Um, I like having t-shirts as undershirts, which is probably the only reason why I've kept a lot of these t-shirts for as long as I have, but they are very convenient. In these little boxes things up top, these are winter accessories, hats, scarves, gloves, and on the bottom are winter socks. So my fuzzy socks, my wool socks, that kind of thing. Okay, tilted you down a little bit. Down here are my pajamas. I don't really have a ton of pajamas either. I'm a nightgown type of person. Um, but these are like, I mean, I got these when I was in eighth grade. Um, <laughs> I got these pajama pants when I was 14. So like, yeah, long, long time pajama. Uh, these pajamas are quite old, but when you need pajamas, this is where I have them. I keep them separate from my other clothes because I just don't really reach for these things as much. Over here we have bathing suits, and then at the bottom we have gym and activewear. I just sort of stuff things in there. We are now in my bathroom, and my apartment only has actually one closet in the entire apartment. So I have to get creative, not now, Jay. So on this little coat rack, I have some of my nightgowns, especially my longer ones. Like I said over there, I'm a big nightgown person. I will choose a nightgown over a pajama any day of the week. So this was actually my first one. It's yellow, it's vintage, it has some embroidery right here. I actually, this is probably my least worn one. I like to wear it as layering, but I really don't wear it that often. This was one of my second ones, very 80s. Also thrifted, all of my nightgowns are secondhand. This one, big grandma vibes. I probably wear this the most. It's probably my ugliest one. This one I actually wear as a dress sometimes. It's so pretty, love it. And then this is a robe for my grandma, which I also love. I keep my nightgowns in here. So when I come home and I shower or I brush my teeth and wash my face, pajamas are right here. All right, and now we're at the only closet in my apartment. So on the outside, I have this like over the door rack thing, and this is where I keep all of my bags. This is my Rebecca Minkoff. It was my first ever designer bag from high school. This is my newest bag purchase. I bought it for the 
Eras Tour because you need a clear stadium bag. And I thought this was like so perfect. Got it secondhand. Almost all of these bags I also got secondhand. What you won't see here is my Mulberry Alexa, which is actually right over there because that is my everyday purse. So that's what I keep in here. Typically how I organize my closet situation is the hanging rack is what is current in season and what I reach for often. And then whatever is in the closet is off season. So right now, a lot of my summer clothes are in this closet and a lot of my winter clothes are still hanging up because I haven't transitioned yet. I'm actually moving at the end of the month and then I'm moving again at the end of June. So I know that my closet is going to be in boxes for a while. So I was like, I'm not even going to bother to like switch around my clothing and everything for this video because I literally will be packing up this entire apartment in about a week when you guys see this. This savers bag, it just has a ton of like accessories, tote bags, that kind of thing. Like just bags for me to go grocery shopping in, stuff like that. <laughs> so we have a shoe rack. I will say probably my weakest closet game is my shoe game. My shoe game kind of sucks, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so the cool shoes that I have are typically over in display that you guys have seen in my videos. Here are some shoes that either didn't make the cut over there or a lot of the shoes that are over display won't fit into this shoe rack, which I'm pretty sure is from Ikea, if I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember. So yeah, a lot of the shoes that are on display, they just won't fit in here, so I have them over there, but yeah. Most of these are thrifted. I actually have a lot of shoes in repair right now, which is also sad. I have another bag and a couple of scarves. Again, these will be put away once I move. And then we have this closet. I typically keep, obviously, my like long maxi dresses and stuff in here. I'm a huge maxi dress and maxi skirt person. I'm such a sucker for those. So that's what I keep in this closet. I have some like heavier jackets, heavier winter jackets that I don't reach for as much. Also in this, in like the closed off closet space, I'll keep some of my like uglier items in here. Not that a lot of these items are ugly, but some of them are. And just like practical, <laughs> like winter coats and stuff. Yeah, lots of long dresses in this area. A bit backlit lighting wise, but this is my dresser. I found this on the street, which was really nice. A little Van Gogh print that I also found on the street. And these pictures that my friend Maria took of me and placed in a nice little photo album. Once again, I don't really work, like I don't really fold clothing, I'm not gonna lie. So my drawers are kind of not aesthetic and you guys are just gonna deal with it. Okay, so this, <laughs> this drawer is just gonna be socks. Up here, we got undies. Very simple. <laughs> then we have shorts and skirts. I love, I'm a big skirt person over shorts in general. Here we have tiny tops, going out tops, just like crop tops for the most part. Basically tops I wouldn't wear at work and more on the, like the casual side. Underneath that, the pants. A lot of my pants are actually hanging up or in the wash right now. And then these are long sleeves and stuff like that for like winter time. So like turtlenecks, stuff. Yeah, just like long sleeve base layers basically. Okay, so you guys recognize this area. This shoe rack I also found on the street. Um, I did paint it. Teddy bears are for my boyfriend, lol. But this is where I display my bigger and chunkier shoes. These boots are one of my newest shoe purchases. I recently got them at the thrift store. These were thrifted. These were thrifted. Um, the only things that weren't thrifted are my Doc Martens, my Bean Boots, and my Cowgirl Boots, which I've had since like 2014. Over here, we have some other shoes. These loafers that were my mom's, I have genuinely worn so much and wear them all the time. These shoes are gorgeous. They are Donald Pliner, which are like fancy company. They're real calfskin, but I will say, I don't wear them that often because they're a bit uncomfy. Sled from like the 20s. Yes, I'm wearing slippers right now, fight me. Um, to have a couple more of my shoes, I have my first pair of Jordans that I absolutely love, some pink Pumas, that kind of thing. Okay, and now we are at the part that you guys actually recognize from my videos, which is my clothing rack. I do try to keep it in sort of a color order. Um, it just helps 
me visualize things a little bit more. The bottom part, not so much, but the top part, I do try to keep in a color order. Starting over here, I have my variety of white shirts. I'm a huge white button up shirt person. I wear them all the time and I have a bunch of them and they all serve different purposes. So we have my first one, which I call my Heather Locklear top. I absolutely love it. It has this gorgeous pointed collar. Hello, you guys can't even see me. <laughs> Thrifted, obviously. This is one of my newest white tops. Thrifted it last year in Sweden. This one is my pirate white top. Do you see how they're different, you guys? I need them all. This one was my dad's. It's like a cropped rugby situation. This is puff sleeve, it's cropped, it's different. This is puff sleeve, it's not cropped. It's all like pretty and embroidery here. This is a white dress. <laughs> I have a little Victoria's Secret top and another white dress. So yeah, I have a lot of white button downs, but I wear them a lot. Next we have this, a uh, fur jacket that I got from Thread Up, which I think is very, very fun. My Jerf Avenue oat suit. I absolutely love Jerf Avenue. You guys hear me talk about them all the time. Very sustainable, very ethical, one of my favorite brands. Moving on, we have the nudes, beiges, and light pinks. We got some dresses going on here. Corset that I got custom made, which was the best decision of my life. I love that corset. This I thrifted in Sweden last year. This I thrifted in New York, so many thrift things. I am also, in addition to just white button downs, I'm just a button down person in general. I love an oversized button down. So I have a ton. I have this one, this pink one. I have this red one. I have this yellow one. I have some more at the bottom. It's just something I wear all the time. So it's something that I value. I only get Ralph Lauren ones and there's a specific type of Ralph Lauren one that I like with the cotton ratio. I'm very specific about the materials of my clothing. I have this silky dress, which I will always have on display. My first and only silky purchase. It's the trowel print. It's so beautiful and puffy and it brings me so much joy. Speaking of big puffy things, this is my Hope McCulley Colossal Knit uh, cardigan. I absolutely love this. My dad got this for me for my birthday last year, maybe the year before. It's really cool, it's so soft. Every single time I wear it, people are like, can I touch your sweater? I'm like, of course, please, cop a feel. Over here, I got my sparkly outfit, both from a thread up, sparkly top, sparkly shirt, just to keep it in there. And then some coats and jackets. On the bottom rack, there was really not that, uh, it's not in order. Um, but it's just more of the same. My folklore cardigan, another Ralph Lauren button down, another Ralph Lauren button down, so many. Um, some more sweaters and jackets, basically just things that don't look as aesthetic up there or don't necessarily like fit the Roy G. Viv style. Some more like darker sweatshirts. I have my two autumnal sweaters that I absolutely love, my Halloween cardigan and then my autumnal sweater. I love tacky sweaters, specifically ones by Alexandra Bartlett. They're my favorite to vintage hunt. Another Alexandra Bartlett um, uh, sweater. And then when I was talking about my Lana Del Rey Born to Die video, somebody said, you could totally make that ride denim jacket. And I said, you know what? I totally could. And you know what I did? I made the ride denim jacket. I acid washed this myself. I glued on the fringe. I put in all the studs and I love it. It's so 2010s and so tacky and it's just the best. Got some jeans here and some flannels and all of that jazz. All right, so the first question I have is if you had to pick just one aesthetic that you had to wear for the rest of your life, which one would it be? And I would say, Depending on where I live for the rest of my life, it would be either Cottagecore or Coconut Girl. I love Coconut Girl style or Key West Kitten that, I mean, clearly I'm wearing a lime green shirt or dress with crabs on it. Like, love that energy. And I think that is so, so fun. And if I lived in a place like California or Miami, it would make more sense year round. Um, but I do love Cottagecore because you can put Cottagecore in like, any season, it makes me so happy. Cottage is a little bit more costumey than I typically go for. Like Key West Kitten is like, I'm not even trying to dress like Coconut Girl Key West Kitten. This is just like how I dress. Whereas Cottage Core, I do feel like I'm a little bit wearing a costume, but 
it's probably my favorite and one that I get the most inspiration out of. Other than those two, I would say it's not really Scandinavian style, but like genuinely Matilda Jerf's aesthetic. The mini dresses with boots, the loose layers, the button downs, the suit sets. Like she has been probably my biggest style inspiration of the last like three years. And I basically anything that she has or buys or styles, I'm like, I need to get that. So those would be like the three aesthetics that I gravitate towards the most. But, and I would say probably the Matilda Jerf aesthetic is the most practical, but cottagecore has to be my favorite. Another person said, what are your go-tos? So like I already mentioned, I love a white button down top, like a white top, even just to put over a crop top or anything layer under a corset. I feel like they're so, so versatile. And in that same vein, like I already said, Ralph Lauren button downs, specifically Yarmouth Ralph Lauren button downs. Those are my favorite. I, as I showed you, I have like four or five of them. I wear them all the time. I wear them with shorts. I wear them at like over a dress. I wear them with like loose trousers. Like it's just, that is my go-to. And then I love the tiny top and long skirt combo. That is, or just a, I mean, I'm a girly girl, especially in the summer. I prefer skirts and dresses more than anything. So I have a ton of sundresses, but I also, I love maxi skirts and tiny tops. If you have like four tiny tops and like three maxi skirts, you have enough outfits for your whole life. My friend Lanch, just Lanch if you don't know, she asked, what is your color palette? Um, and do you have like a multi-aesthetic wardrobe or just one? I guess I would say I have a multi-aesthetic wardrobe because I wouldn't necessarily say all of my clothes go together. I almost like, I've talked about this before, but I often like to treat clothing like costumes. So as a result, I do have sort of like different costumes. Like I have a very 70s dress from the 70s. I have a very cottage core dress that's very like costumey kind of thing. So I would definitely say I have just a mishmash of a bunch of different aesthetics because I'm so bad at sticking to an aesthetic that I just, I just buy clothes that I like. And then color palette. I mean, it's a lot of pink, a lot of bright colors. I just, I always, I would say my style is like cottagecore, but you up the saturation. So like lots of florals, lots of color, but still in those same like patterns and stuff as cottagecore. So my color palette is just like bright florals, just bright colors, as you can see. Oof, I love this one. A piece of clothing you didn't expect to like, but love. So I will say I'm really specific about buying clothing. I'm not a hyper consumer. It takes me a very long time to like commit to a purchase. So the times where I acquire clothing and didn't necessarily like it at first. Typically it's when there are gifts. And so how I do, since I'm so picky, how I do gifts with my family is I'll get like an email and I'll link like 10 things and I'll say, pick one. Like just pick one of the 10 things. That way you still feel like you're giving me a surprise. I still feel surprised, but we're limited to these 10 things that I personally picked out. And a few Christmases ago, I did that. And I kind of threw in this Everlane coat at the last minute. Cause I was like, I would nice, it'd be nice to have a, a pea coat. And it's this one right here. And I literally put it in last minute. I did not think that my dad or mom was gonna get it for me for Christmas that year. But my dad ended up getting it for me. And you're like, you picked it out. So how do you know that you didn't think you were gonna like it? Again, it was just sort of like, I'll throw that in there. It'll be nice, but like, I, they, I, I know my parents, they're not gonna get that for me. And my dad did. It's this gorgeous Everlane Peacoat in this dusty lavender color. It's looking very, very lavender on camera, but it actually is, it can skew gray sometimes, which is also really nice. It is called their Cocoon Coat. So it's not very tailored. The way that, it's sort of hard to see, but, the way that it is cut, it goes out at the shoulders. It's sort of egg shaped, cocoon shaped. So it is like a little bit more oversized. And when I first got it, I grew up in Florida. I don't know anything about winter coats. So I thought 
If it's cold, you need a puffer coat, which I hate, I think they're so ugly. And wool is for like fall or springtime. And so for the first year that I had this coat, I never wore it because I never felt like there was appropriate weather for it. And then I realized, Dion, you're stupid. Before puffer coats were invented, what did everybody in Ireland, England, Denmark, Germany, all those cold countries, what do you think they were wearing? Mama, it was wool, bitch. It was wool. And I was like, you're so stupid. I realized this thing is so warm. The cocoon shape really traps in your body heat. You can layer plenty underneath it, has great pockets. The lining is nice, it's not itchy, and it's so warm. And I think it is just so much better than a puffer coat. I absolutely love this. I know Everlane is a sustainable brand, but they've done some sketchy things in the past. But this coat, I remember opening it and being like, whoa, I did not expect to get this coat. Cool, I'm glad I have a piece from Everlane. I've never tried them before. This was back in like 2020. 2020 came by, didn't really wear it. And then I discovered, and now this is my, basically my only winter coat. This is my main winter coat. It's my favorite. I really didn't expect to love it as much as I do. And now I'm like, this is the best thing in the world. And it's so nice to have something with color in it during winter. Okay, and then the last question are some of my go-to outfits, which I guess I will just try on for you and just show you. If I was a cartoon, these would be my uniforms. Okay, so actually I'm gonna keep on what I have on right now. These are my espadrilles. I got them from DSW a zillion years ago. I actually have, have had them repaired. I love these shoes. I love an espadrille. I love a modest heel. So one of my go-to outfits is always gonna be a sundress, a bright fun sundress and some little espadrilles. I have a couple of pairs of espadrilles actually at the shoe repair shop right now. So maybe I wouldn't choose these black ones, but if you look on my Instagram and stuff, I'm always wearing these shoes. So a, a classic go-to outfit for me, sundress, cute little espadrilles. You can't go wrong. If your dress is a statement enough, you won't need to put other things on in your outfit. All right, this is my Saturday morning fit almost always. It is a Ralph Lauren button down and then my Jerf Avenue ash on the go pants. Let me tilt you down. And then the loafers. I resist the urge to wear this outfit every single Saturday and every single Saturday, I basically wear this outfit. I love a slip on shoe. So these black loafers are just a go-to of mine. They're kind of orthopedic vibes because they were my mom's, but I don't care. Again, this Ralph Lauren shirt could be interchanged with any of my other ones, but <clears throat> an oversized button down and my loose ash on the go pants. I'm not kidding. I wear these pants all the time. Jerf Avenue has a couple other colors in them and I want them in every single color because I wear these pants at least like twice a week. And that's like not even remotely an exaggeration. I, as much as I love like style, fashion, dresses, skirts, you will see me in something like this 90% of the time. Okay, I'm gonna hold my mic for this one because I think if I clip it to my top, I'll flash you guys. But like I said, tiny top, long skirt is a classic outfit for me. I call these my loincloth tops because they're basically just a loincloth for your boobs. They barely cover your boobs and then your whole back is exposed. And that's my favorite thing in the world. One of my favorite features to show off is my back. I think I have a really nice back. I especially have really nice back skin. I like to take the opportunity to show it off. I love showing off my back. I have a bunch of these tops. This one I got from Poshmark, I think, maybe Depop. Um, I will convert tankini tops into crop tops for this purpose. I just, they take up no room in your suitcase if you're going on vacation, love it. And then a maxi skirt. I have a bunch of these. This one I thrifted while I was in Miami. It actually says Miami all over it, which I think is really cute. And in the summertime, this is just my favorite favorite kind of vibe because the skirt creates a wind tunnel to keep your legs and your nether regions nice and cool and then your back is all exposed and you're feeling breezy. I put a little tote bag because I do often have some sort of like bigger bag especially when I'm going out just in case I need to bring my water bottle or something and I would wear a pair of like espadrilles either my black ones that I already showed you or one of the ones that are getting repaired but 
a classic little sandal. If I'm being super, super honest, if I'm in a rush or not seeing anybody, I'm wearing my flip flops. I'm wearing my ugly rainbow flip flops. I wait. If you want to know the real me, these nasty <laughs> flip flops from rainbow are my most worn item. I would wear them with this outfit. I would wear them with any outfit. I wear them all the time. They're so comfortable. I truly believe they're the only flip flops anyone should buy. They last forever. The company, at least they did have a take back program with their shoes. My brother is addicted to them. My stepdad is addicted to them. I've been wearing rainbows since I was a sophomore in high school and I've only gone through three pairs and I'm 27 and I wear them to the bone. People have to pry my flip flops off my feet before I get a new pair. Yeah, in a realistic term, I'm sorry guys, but I'm, I'm rocking my flops. I'm so sorry, but in almost every outfit, especially in the summer, I'm rocking my flops. And that's something that you guys are all gonna have to suffer through. <laughs> this is a little bit similar to what I wore before, um, but this is definitely my go-to like wintry outfit, which is a cashmere cardigan buttoned a little bit. This is like the only way I can feel hot in the winter is having a cardigan like this. I just always feel so frumpy dumpy in the winter and cashmere is so, so warm. And this is from J. Crew that I thrifted from ThreadUp originally. I have a couple other like button cashmere tops um, or button cardigan tops because again, I just struggle to feel cute in the winter and this is a way to do it. And then a wide leg trouser. These are Drift Avenue ones. I love these. They make my butt look great. Wear these all the time. This is a very classic, like under 50 degrees Dion outfit. This is something that I would wear, maybe put a coat on it or something, but like this is very classic. You can see that I'm just not a huge, even though I'm a maximalist, I'm not necessarily a huge over accessorizer. Like I keep, things pretty minimal. Obviously I'm showing you very base level outfits and then I would maybe add a little bit more if I was going somewhere, but I'm just sort of a, a simple gal, which is why I like statement pieces because then I don't have to put in that much effort in accessorizing if I just put in, if everything I'm wearing is a statement piece. So yeah, this is another, it's kind of boring, similar to my button down and silky pant uh, outfit from before. This is just the more like winterized, a little bit more formal version, but not even. Okay, this is the last outfit. I haven't completely put it together yet because I kind of want to walk you through it. This is a nightgown, thrifted as always. I have my custom corset from Etsy, from the Royal Taylor on Etsy, and then my pirate top. And this is a go-to. I've done some variation of this, changing around the corset or the top or the dress, but some variation of like nightgown, loose top and corset in a ton of different ways. I wore something there. I wore almost this exact outfit while I was in S Copenhagen, I believe. I can't remember if it was Copenhagen or Stockholm, but I like to do a little off the shoulder vibe at first. And then you slip on your corset. I'm sorry if my mic is going crazy. And I like to make sure that the top is sort of off, off the shoulder before I go ahead and tighten it. Pretend I'm tightening it all the way because I don't want to, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like doing anything. But do you see how this is three pieces that just all of a sudden I made like a fabulous dress and it looks so cool. I've paired this outfit with cowgirl boots. I've paired it with my go-go boots. I've paired it with my giant chunky heels. And yeah, sometimes I'll switch out the base nightgown. I have a couple of other corsets, but I really like this one because it's an underbust corset. And I love this top to layer under cors corsets. How many times can I say corset? I love laying this top under corsets because it's so flowy and floral, but I know this seems sort of different from all the others, but this is definitely like uh, an outfit that I gravitate towards. I've probably worn this outfit three or four times in some variation. It's an instant hit. People think you look so amazing when you're really wearing pajamas and like two other things. Very, very simple. It looks so intricate and beautiful and feminine. Love it. I'm definitely, I'm going to France uh, this summer and I'm definitely wearing this outfit. I just think it's so classic and I wanted to show you guys because I really think 
with like a corset and then just the basic pieces in your closet, you can create infinite outfits. And this is one of my go-tos. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I know it's a little bit different than my other videos, a bit more casual, a bit more all over the place. I usually don't do these sorts of videos, but you guys requested it. So you better hype this up because then I'll be really mad if this video gets like no views after you guys requested it. Um, but if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me. Coachella is happening this week. Would you guys want me to do a Coachella outfits review? Let me know, I've been thinking about it. Moving, I'm going to France, I'm going to see Taylor Swift in May. May is a huge month for me, so there'll be a lot of good content coming out. So definitely make sure you subscribe to my channel, I post videos every Thursday. And follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I post content there almost every single day. And with that, have a happy, happy day. Bye!